everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside, a little bit of smokiness. It is afternoon instead of morning. It's so good. That lap song, so, so good. As always, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, or as I always say, maybe something harder. Depends on what part of the planet you're on, right guys? So today we're going to be talking about professional photographers moving towards Fujifilm medium format by the hordes. Maybe not by the hordes, but they are moving towards them. I'm going to get into that a little bit in just a moment, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the X Summit that we just watched today. It was really interesting. I was talking about it uh, last week a little bit. September 2nd, the X Summit was going to happen and they were going to be talking about new cameras, new lenses and all this stuff from Fujifilm. And I want to tell you about it. I want to talk to you guys about it a little bit and do a little comparison between the Fujifilm 50S original and Fujifilm 50S Mark II. So I want to compare and contrast the two different cameras to see if it's something that you would want to purchase either as a first camera, first medium format, let's say, or maybe it's an upgrade and you already have a maybe a 50R or a 50S, the first version. So I want to talk to you about it a little bit and get your thoughts also. I'll give you my opinions as always, but I want to get your thoughts also. So this video is sponsored by me. <laughs> it actually is, right? So I created a product called Aurora Camera Care. It is a lens as well as a sensor cleaning kit. And if you guys haven't cleaned your sensors as of late, you probably should. Stop retouching all those black spots out of your clouds and nonsense and putting in all that extra effort after the fact in post-production. It's ridiculous. Clean your damn sensors, right? So I created a product that looks like this. Aurora Camera Care. It is available for full frame APS-C as well as micro four thirds. Doesn't matter what camera you have, I have the perfect swab, the perfect cleaner for you. Some people say, well, what's the difference between yours and the rest of them that we see on the market? What makes yours better? You know, I'm always into making a better mousetrap, but that's what I did about a year and a half ago, two years ago when I created this product. Normally you see swabs that come in these packs and you get a whole bunch of these things. You open them up and you use them, right? Some of them come with like a little droplet and you have like the, let's say chemicals, right? That you put on there like, yeah, let's put three drops on one side, three on the other side. Oh, did I put it to the edge? Did I get, is, is it dry in a spot? It's a bunch of nonsense, guys. So the better mousetrap is I created them like this. So you have a dry and you have a wet. The wet is pre-moistened with the exact amount of cleaner that you need every single time. And they're perfectly sealed. You can throw it in the ocean, pull it out, dry it off, and now open it. And that's it. They're vacuum sealed. You can use them. So anyways, that is the difference. It is a perfect cleaning every single time. There's no guesswork in it. And instead of sending your camera away for a week or two weeks and spending a hundred bucks for a cleaning, you get five cleanings in here. So like each cleaning is like five bucks or so. I mean, you can... Clean your damn sensors, all right? Clean your sensors. It's easy, it's simple, it's safe. And like I said, everything is exact for you, all right? So anyways, if you haven't picked up any of these in the past, you can go over to jchristina.com. Go check them out over there. If you use promo code YT20, you'll get 20% off. Also, you can pick them up on b &H Photo and Video or on Amazon or wherever you like to. Mom and pops all over the world carry these, all right? So go check them out. Anyways, Enough self-promotion into the Fujifilm GFX 50S Mark II. This camera looks badass. Now, I was watching this summit, the X Summit, and I was drinking the Kool-Aid. I have to, I just have to admit it. I was drinking that Kool-Aid. When you watch it as someone in the U.S., um, it is a Japanese-style event. So it's very stuffed shirt. So the guy is there like this, and this is the best camera that I've ever seen in my entire life. It has the new AF. It's that type of thing. So you have to get past that because that's just how they are. All right. And just look at the information for what it is. And like I said, the information I thought was stellar. Okay. I listened to the entire thing, soup to nuts, beginning to end about all of the lenses, the cameras and what they're doing and the different things that they're doing and where they're going and their roadmap and what makes them different and all the rest of the stuff. And I'm telling you, 
I was sucking down that Kool-Aid because it makes me want to move into a Fujifilm camera. I've talked to you guys about this many, many times in the past, and I really do believe that Fujifilm is one of those camera companies that are like the dark horse, okay? That is in the back end, not looking like they're doing much of anything, but they're doing a shit ton. All right. They are taking the medium format market by storm and they've been doing it for years now. And the other manufacturers out there, Phase and you got Hasselblad and all that, they're they're having a hard time. They're figuring out how are we going to sell our camera for thirty five thousand dollars when these damn people are selling them for four grand. What are we doing? Bear in mind, Fujifilm does have a crop sensor, let's call it. It's a crop sensor medium format, slightly smaller than the larger full frame medium format of a Hasselblad. But honestly, it's enough. It is definitely enough. It looks amazing. Anyways, let's get into the compare and contrast between the version one and the version two of the GFX 50S and the 50S Mark II, the new one. So both of these cameras both have a 51.4 megapixel CMOS sensor. Nothing has changed. It's identical. Where things do change is with the new one, the 50S Mark II, it does have the X Processor 4 in it in comparison to the X Processor Pro. So the X Processor 4 is like a new design. It has new algorithms in it. It provides better accuracy when it comes to face and eye detection because it's processing more, okay, quicker. And that's the whole idea is being able to process faster and doing it lightweight without using more energy. And that's what they've come up with. And I'll tell you about that when we talk about battery life in just a minute. Now, one of the things that really makes the 50S Mark II stand out is that it has in-body image stabilization, five axis, the same image stabilization that you would get on a GFX 100 or the GFX 100S. That is awesome. The original 50S does not have in-body image stabilization. So there's gonna be a lot of people that just love this and will go to it just because of that. That is a big feature. Now, both the 50S and the 50S Mark II have the same 3.2 inch touch panel on the back. It's 2.36 million dots or whatever. It's the exact same touch panel, so nothing changed there. Now, both the 50S as well as the 50S Mark II have the same UHS-2 dual card slots in it, so that's fine. Nothing has changed there. Now, what has changed is the shutter unit. The actual unit itself has been completely redesigned on the GFX 50S II. They made it smaller and lighter weight and more efficient. Why? To use the new battery that they're using for this new camera. So instead of using the TP125 that they used in the 50S Mark I, now they're using the same battery right out of their X-T4. That is an APS-C camera. So it's using the exact same battery, but now with this bigger, much bigger medium format unit. How did they do it? Once again, a redesign. Like I alluded to earlier, that X Processor 4 in comparison to the X Processor Pro is just simply more efficient. Even though it's faster, it's using less juice. And that holds true also with this new redesign of the shutter unit. Less juice required, lighter, faster. This is what they're going for when it comes to this 50S Mark II, and they're definitely doing it. Now, if you want to know how many shots you can get out of the battery, instead of 400 shots, you can get about 440 shots, which is a lot if you think about instead of using that TP125, using the X-T4 battery, a smaller battery in it, and actually getting more shots instead of equal, that is an amazing accomplishment. Also, we're gonna get into some video, and this I think was pretty amazing also. Now, watching that entire summit from beginning to end, it is very apparent that Fujifilm understands that you and I are hybrid shooters, or the majority of us are hybrid shooters. That means that we're shooting photos some days, we're shooting video some days, we're shooting both a lot of other days, and they understand that a lot of people are looking for a professional unit that will be able to do video, but with a massive sensor, a medium format sensor. And that is what they're striving to do here. Now, listening to it, what they were talking about was they are working on XLR input. That's gonna be coming soon. An XLR input would be amazing because now you have high-end audio coming directly into that camera. 
XLR. All of the major manufacturers out there, Panasonic, doesn't matter who they are, could be Canon with their C-Series, C100, 200, 300, 500, whatever. Those all have XLR ends. Well, Fujifilm is working on that. What they're also working on is B-RAW. What is B-RAW? Basically, it is raw video from Blackmagic. It's their codec. Supposedly, in October, they're going to release a firmware update for this camera that is going to allow you to be able to record in that codec. That is massive, guys. So if you're like me and you use DaVinci Resolve, you're going to be able to use B-RAW, right, internal to that DaVinci Resolve, and be able to color grade after the fact a lot more effectively. Also, both the GFX 50S and the GFX 50S Mark II Two will only record full HD, which is 1080p at 30 frames per second. Not bad because it is a medium format camera. But if you want to get 4K and be able to shoot medium format, you will have to buy one of the 100. So that is a GFX 100 or a GFX 100S, and you'll be able to then record in 4K medium format. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, the Mark II does offer recording times of two hours. And this is where I was talking to you about battery life. The Mark I only allows for 30 minutes. Two hours compared to 30 minutes. That is like four times as long. Once again, with a little tiny X-T4 battery in it. That is insane, guys. That is absolutely insane. How they're getting this to work out, I really don't know. Remember, you're getting more shots, all right? You're getting four times as long record times. There's a lot going on here with a tiny battery, so however they're squeezing the hell out of this, I don't know, but they are definitely squeezing it, and they did a good job at it. Now, one of the things that I don't like is the GFX 50S, the Mark I, the old version, doesn't give you phase detect AF. It only provides contrast detect AF, and that is it. It doesn't offer a hybrid autofocusing system. Well, the new model, the Mark II, also only provides contrast detect. So if you want to have a hybrid of contrast detect and phase detect, so you have better autofocus, you'll have to look at the 100 or 100S for it. Every other manufacturer out there uses a hybrid, both contrast detect and phase detect, because it's faster autofocus and more accurate. Minus Panasonic. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Panasonic. They, they never get anything anyway, so we won't even discuss that. They'll just stick with contrast forever, because to them it's better. So... That's one of the problems that I feel that they should have addressed. With this 50S Mark II, I really would like to have seen an autofocusing system that was a hybrid, a contrast and phase detect, but they didn't offer it. And I think one of the reasons why they didn't is because of price. And they're really trying to keep that price low, low, low. And they did. But that's one of the things that I think they had to sacrifice on, and that's what they did. Now, in conclusion, I guess, you could say that the GFX 50S is simply a much cheaper camera than the 50S Mark I. But when I say cheaper, I'm not talking about cheaper like less stuff in it. You're actually getting more, but for less money. The processor is much better. It has faster auto-focusing system. Why? Because the processor is better. Not because it offers you phase detect. It's just it can process things quicker. Also, it has its class-leading in-body image stabilization. The exact same in-body image stabilization as seen in the GFX 100 and the GFX 100S. That is awesome. That is unbelievably awesome. It also has pixel shift for multi-shot to get these big megapixel massive shots of 200 megapixels or something. If you want to do that, if that's your thing, you can do that. And lastly, that longer battery life, guys. I think it's still amazing that you can have a handful of these little chiclets, right? These little X-T4 batteries in your pocket and be able to pop those things in there whenever you want to. And you have like a really, really an amazing camera that's smaller, lighter weight, faster, better, 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 and just longer battery life, especially when it comes to video. From 30 minutes for a battery, you're going to get two hours out of the battery recording video. That's insanity. That is awesome. Now, remember also, once again, I was telling you about price, and they had to make some sacrifices. The 50S originally came out at about $5,499. Let's call it $5,500. This camera is being introduced at four grand, guys, four grand. 
So you're looking at like $1,500 cheaper than the original. And they're giving you a lot more. I think that is absolutely amazing. And in my personal opinion, if you currently own the GFX 50S and you want to move into this 50S Mark II, you better put that camera on eBay soon. Because as soon as this comes out at this price, you're going to lose a lot of money on that original version. Okay, I'm just telling you, I'm warning you right now, put it on to eBay, like right now. If you want to stick with it, that's fine. But if you want to trade it in, you better trade in fast. So another thing that I want to say about Fujifilm is, as I always tell you guys, Fujifilm gives back. When other companies give you a firmware update, it's just to fix their mess. You beta test their shit for them, and then they send you firmware updates to fix what you found that they should have fixed prior to release. Fujifilm does that, but then they add to it. So, like I've told you many times in the past, there was cameras that came out that only shot 1080p, and literally two months later, they were shooting 4K. People were like, holy crap, my camera is shooting 4K. I didn't buy a 4K camera, but Fujifilm gave it to me. And how much did they charge me for it? Unlike Panasonic, more shade. Zero. They charge nothing. And you went from 1080p to 4K, literally overnight, with a firmware update. The firmware updates to them are a means of giving back to their clients. And I think it's fantastic. So if I was to start my photographic journey all over again, starting today, and I didn't have like 30 grand worth of Canon gear sitting over there, I would really be hard pressed not to pick up a medium format Fujifilm today. For what I do and what I did moving to where I am right now, I would be hard pressed not to. You are getting so much value for your four grand, it's unbelievable, all right? So if you're a portrait shooter or someone that doesn't need 20 frames per second, these cameras, bear in mind, will only do three to five frames per second. They are not sports action wildlife cameras. If you need that, this is not where you're looking. Look elsewhere. But if you need just, just ultra high quality, this is where you need to go. You want a lot of megapixels, but the megapixels are just beautiful. Medium format is where you go. Just because you have a lot of megapixels, that doesn't mean they're good megapixels. And that's where a lot of people get it twisted. You want a lot of megapixels, but you want good megapixels. So you have a ton of crisp data. That's where I see... Fujifilm is going with their medium format. And like I said, Hasselblad, Phase, and all the rest of them are just, they don't know what to do with themselves right now. I personally, just so you know, I'm not a fanboy. I personally am currently shooting on a Sony right here. Over here, I'm shooting on a Canon. When I'm doing the episodic TV work that I do on a regular basis, we're shooting four or five EVA ones. Those are Panasonic. They're using Canon glass, but they're EVA ones because they can't autofocus. They're even ones, as well as some B-roll using some S1s as well as S5 and whatnot. So we're using Panasonic. So I use everything. If the best camera for the job, that's the camera that you should use. Don't be a fanboy for anything. So many people, they buy something and then from that day forward, they're a fanboy of whatever that is to somehow justify their purchase. You don't need to justify your purchase. Just get it, use it. And if it's the right tool for the job, use it. That's it. So anyways, guys, I want to know about you. You heard what I think about this. I want to know what you think about medium format. I want to know what you think about Fujifilm. I want to know what you think about this GFX 50S Mark II. Are you considering a medium format camera over a full frame camera? Do you currently shoot full frame? and you're thinking about moving into medium format, or you're currently shooting Micro Four Thirds or APS-C, and possibly you're going to skip full frame and go straight to medium format. Why? Because the price is right. Is that a possibility? I wanna hear from you. I wanna know your thoughts. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, even in the least, please give it a thumbs up. That will be very, very helpful for the YouTube gods to shine their wonderful light on the channel as well as this video. Tell your friends, family, colleagues about this video as well as the channel. We're trying to build up this community. Talking about communities, head over to community.jcristina.com. Once again, community.jcristina.com. 
jchristina.com. It is our creative Discord server. When we're done talking down here in the comment area, we talk over there. There's tech heads, photo, video guys, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shooters worldwide talking all day long, 24-7. Once again, community.jchristina.com. Also, if you want to help out the channel, you can use this address here through PayPal, or you can click this button right down here that says join. If you join, you become a member. I can give you perks for doing so. Also, now YouTube is giving us this button here that says thanks with a little dollar sign. Supposedly, if you use that, whatever you contribute, let's say the lion's share goes to me. Or if you use that same button on other channels that have that button on there, the lion's share of your donation goes to them. And I encourage you to do that. Also, if you haven't went over to my website as of yet, head over there, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.